Hey, I'm Zeke. And I'm Brian. And you're watching Two Guys Talking Home Buying. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Uh, if you haven't watched our show before, our goal with the show is very, very simple. We want to help as many renters as possible to buy their first homes and not just to buy the house, but to use the house to increase the, your net worth. So real estate is one of the best things that you can do to increase your net worth to get you closer to your financial goals, and that's what we cover here. And we, we go through everything. We talk about getting pre-approved, we talk about searching for homes, going through escrow, dealing with counter offers, you know. Just everything. Everything, you name it. And uh, what we're really gonna talk about today is credit. So hey everyone, I'm Zeke. I'm the social media director here at Showcase Agency. Um, and I do plan on buying my first piece of real estate this year. Um, I'm super inexperienced. I, I don't want to know uh, a whole lot, but I do have a lot of questions. And Brian over here been in the industry for like over 15 years, so I'm sure he's gonna be able to, you know, get a lot of these answers. So yeah, and we thought it would be great to have someone that's experienced, like myself. Uh, it, answering questions from somebody that's doing this for the first time so we thought you guys would enjoy it and uh, uh, my experience with this is I got into mortgages in 2005 I was a, a loan officer and uh, I've been licensed in as many as 48 states at one time and back in 2017 uh, I started Showcase Agency with my wife Karen and at Showcase Agency what we do is we help people to buy and sell homes and get home financing uh, Karen's been a licensed realtor t since 2001, so between the two of us, we've got like 36 plus years of experience or so. So uh, Zeke had the idea of actually doing this show with newbie questions and giving, uh, you know, just doing it on camera. And hopefully you guys will find this uh, helpful. And uh, uh, if you're thinking about buying your first home, you've probably got questions about credit, you're not sure maybe exactly what to do about credit, and we're gonna get into all of that in a second. This episode's all about credit, and uh, be sure to hang in to the very end because we're also gonna handle a viewer question about the housing market and where that market is headed, and if you're thinking of buying your first home this year, I'm sure that'll be important to you. So let's go ahead and jump into it and kick it off. Uh, what's your first question on credit? Awesome, so which bureau is used for a mortgage? Great question, Thank great you. question. So. Which bureau is used for a mortgage? And what we're, we're referring to here is uh, credit bureaus. And there's three credit bureaus. There's Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. So there's three bureaus. And your scores with each bureau uh, are different. So you might have a, a 720 with Equifax. You might have a 710 with TransUnion and you could have a 675 with uh, Equifax. Uh, so uh, they, 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 they don't always, uh, they're, they're not always the same score from one bureau to the next, uh, but the, to answer your question, the one that we use is the middle score. So if you had a, a, a 650, a 660, and a 670, the 660 is in the middle. Okay. And that's what we would use to qualify you for the loan. And if there was more than one person on the application, we're going to use the lowest of the, the, the middle score that's the lowest. So if there's two people on the application and the lowest mid score is a 650, that's what's used. If there was four people on the application and the lowest, score, mid, lowest mid score was a 650, then that's what would be used. Does awesome. that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got you. So uh, it kind of just changes, uh, you know, depending on the... The, the credit on which bureau you guys use, or, or sorry, the client? No, yeah, so, so, so it's not necessarily a, a certain bureau every time. It's not like we're always gonna use Equifax, or we're always gonna use Experian, or we're always gonna use TransUnion. Okay. We're gonna use whichever one falls in the middle okay. numerically. Doesn't matter who it's with. It could be with TransUnion, Equifax, gotcha. Experience, it doesn't gotcha. matter. Whatever falls in the middle numerically, that's the one that we use. Gotcha. Thank yeah. you. I know I wasn't the best at explaining that. No, no, no. I don't think I. Thank yeah, you. I don't think you're, I did a good job to start. But you're good. You're good. Uh, and then, what are some ways to get your credit score up like fast? Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, 
so, so let's talk about what's on your credit report first. Okay. So you get an idea of all the stuff that's on your credit report because it's not just your open accounts. You know, so if you've got credit cards, auto loans, um, if you had a mortgage, but if you're first time buyer, you're not having a mortgage, but uh, if you had an installment loan, all those kind of things are on your credit report. And once the account closes, if it's a positive account, it stays on your account. It stays on your credit report for ten years. Okay. If it's a negative account, it stays on your report for seven years, and then it goes away. Um, the older something negative gets, the less impact it has on your score. That's good. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so that's why it's important. Now we're talking about improving your credit, right? Improving your credit score, and w w why that's important is because your credit score is like the number one most important thing to getting the best interest rate. So, um, or, or getting the, the, the best uh, lender credit. When you buy a house, you can choose an interest rate that has a credit or you can choose an interest rate that has a cost to it. Uh, if you're short on cash and you just wanna come in with your down payment and you wanna get somebody else to cover your closing cost, one of the best ways to do that is with a lender credit, and the biggest lender credits are uh, for better credit scores. So, so that's why this is important. I know I didn't answer your question about what to do, no, but, you're good. but like this you. is why it's important. Um, so uh, getting your credit score up super important. Uh, what's on your credit report? You've got uh, your positive accounts. You've got your negative accounts for seven years. There's also uh, public records. So public records would be if you file for bankruptcy, that's a public record. So that's on your credit report. If you had a home before and it was foreclosed on, that's on your credit report. Okay. Um, a, a long time, well, not a long time, long, you know, it seems like forever, but probably back in, well, that is a while back, 07, 08, 09, there were a lot of what was called short sales, and that's where a person owned a house and they accepted, uh, and the bank accepted less than what was owed. That's called a short sale. That was a negative thing on your credit report. Bankruptcies, short sales, foreclosures, uh, judgment. Let, uh, credit card companies, some of them will take you to court if you don't pay the bill. Really? Some of them and it, it, they'll uh, request a judgment. Now what a judgment is, a judgment is a court-ordered payment. So uh, the, the court basically forces you and they'll garnish your wages, they'll take it out of your paycheck, all kinds of wow. stuff. Judgments uh, are in that uh, uh, public records section. Okay. If you didn't pay your taxes, your, pro your uh, uh, income taxes, and the uh, IRS or Franchise Tax Board, whoever the past due bill is with, um, if, if they uh, send you a notice saying that they'll file a lien against you and then you don't pay, then they file a lien and that shows up on your credit. All these things that I just mentioned, the, the bankruptcies, foreclosures, short sales, judgments, um, uh, and, and then the um, last the one that lien. I just said, the lien, the tax lien, all of those things are negative. They will bring your score down a lot. Significant even. Like Sign yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll bring it. I mean, you're talking about um, 50, 60, 70 points, That's 100 a points. It's a lot. Now, the other problem with some of these events when it comes to getting a mortgage is that with things like bankruptcies or foreclosure or short sale, you have to wait a certain period of time before you can qualify for the loan. FHA loans have the shortest waiting periods uh, and then conventional loans have the longest waiting period. So if you've only been out of bankruptcy for a few years, you can probably get a FHA loan, but you couldn't get a conventional loan. Really? You have to wait a, a lot longer. Yeah, so, so, so that's uh, public records. What else is on the credit report? Your employment history, uh, your uh, your, your self-reported employment history. So when you fill out an application for credit, uh, and if they've asked for employment information, sometimes that'll get uh, transmitted over to the bureaus. Uh, 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 what else is on there? Your residence history. Um, there's also a list of all your inquiries. 
So when you uh, uh, apply for a loan, like a mortgage or an auto loan or whatever, uh, most of the time the lender is going to pull uh, your credit report. That becomes an, an inquiry on your credit report. That brings your score down. Even if you don't get the loan? The, the even if you don't get the loan, yeah. What? Yeah, even if you don't get the loan, it brings your score down because it's the inquiry that brings the score down, not whether or not you get the loan. I yeah, know that. yeah, and and then also on the credit report, you'll have a list of all your creditors okay. and how to get in touch with them. They'll have their addresses and their phone oh, numbers okay, and yeah. things like that. So, so that's everything that's on a credit report. Now, what can you do to improve your credit report? Well, it depends on where the problem is. If you've got uh, collections, uh, then the the collection is a very. You know what a collection is. Not really. I kind of. I. I don't want to. Okay. I, I think you no. would do a better job at explaining. No, 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 no worries. Stuff. So, so if you've got a financial obligation like a credit card, okay. and then you stop paying on that credit card, let's say you owe a thousand bucks, and you're just like, well, I'm not going to pay it anymore. They're going to uh, eventually. The credit card company will take your account and they'll give it to a collection agency. And what the collection agency does is they start mailing you, and they'll call you if they're allowed to call you. Um, and they'll start trying to get you to pay that. Um, if you don't pay it, eventually it'll usually become what's called a charge off. And that's where the uh, uh, credit card company has decided, you know what, this thing is so old, we haven't, this account is so old, we haven't gotten any money from the credit card holder. Um, we're just gonna take the balance that they owe us and we're just gonna write it off on our financials. We're just, and so they call that a charge off. Uh, that's very important because if something is a collection, it may have to get paid in order to close the loan. Okay. But if it's a charge off, it doesn't count. And you just, no, so no one ever paid for, pays for it if it's a charge off? If it's, just, a, yeah, yeah. And, and if it's a collection um, and, and you don't pay it and it doesn't go to charge off status, then you, you still, haven't done. They can't send you to jail. They can't, um, you, you know, they, it, like sue you. They can't sue you. Yeah, exactly. So there's nothing really negative that happens. Uh, well, I mean, your credit goes down yeah, really bad. But but here's another thing. You so because we're talking about how to improve your credit. Let's say that you've got a collection, and let's say it's like, you know, five hundred dollar collection, and it's two years old. Okay. You're going to be better off leaving that collection the way it is instead of paying it. And what? the reason is, is because your credit score is affected by your most recent uh, uh, history. Okay. So if you've got a collection that's two years old and then all of a sudden you pay it, it goes from being two years old to being today, being recent, like right now. And so when you pay a collection, what actually happens is your uh, credit score goes down. See, I would think it would go up because you pay <laughs> yeah. off your debt, right? Yeah, but most everybody right. thinks that too. Most everybody are really uh, is is really wrong about collections, charge offs, and also uh, credit card balances. That's the things that trip most people up. They think, oh, okay, well, I hit a bad spot with my credit. I got into some collections or whatever. I'm going to pay these collections off. It's going to improve my credit, and so then they pay them. And, and it doesn't work that way. It actually goes down, it'll stay down, and then it'll start to go back up. But if you would have never like touched it because it was old, usually you're better off. Wow. And then I have like a kind of scenario here with you. So let's say you do owe um, money to a uh, collection or just uh, the tax lien or, mm -hmm. or the lien you were talking about. Is, is it, uh, and then, you know, you want to get the house, but you don't have enough to pay your, everything, you know, up front, mm -hmm. your debt. Can you do like a payment plan or something or just, you know, paying in, uh, in, in small bits? So a payment plan on the debt? Yeah, on the debt. So that way, you know, your credit uh, could go up slowly. Is that a thing? Or so are you talking about like collection debt? Like or? collection or like the, the lien, like uh, from, like let's say so, you so, so, your... so the lien, the way the lien work, tax lien works is it brings your credit score down. Okay. But until that lien is, is, so you go through steps. The first step would be to pay the lien. And so then the lien would be uh, the, whoever uh, owns the lien, IRS or Franchise Tax Board, they would report to the credit bureau and say this lien has been satisfied. Okay. Um, but they're not going to report that 
until it's paid in full. They may work out a payment arrangement with you, but they're not going to update the credit report until, or the credit bureaus until you pay the thing in full. Gotcha. So, 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 okay. so yeah, you could set up a, a payment plan. A lot of times collection agencies will set up payment plans, but that's not going to uh, help you improve your credit until, it, you know, like in the example of the lien, you get something that says it's satisfied. Like lifted, right? It's no longer there. Well, no, it's still there. Uh, public, well, public records are, so um, obviously if you have an open account, good standing account, that's on your credit report. But once an account is closed, if it's positive, it stays for 10 years. If it's negative, it stays for seven if you've got a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, that's part of your uh, public records. If you've got a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, that one's going to stay for 10 years. If you've got a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, that one stays for 7. If you've got uh, tax liens and uh, judgments, those things stay for 10. Wow. Yeah, so, so even once you pay it, it's still going to be on your credit report. It's still going to bring your score down. What's going to make it better is if it, this is, again, the, the tax lien. What makes a tax lien better is that it's paid and it, it's reported as satisfied, and then it just starts getting older. You know, a month goes by, two months, three months. So just time. And it, time time will help. Wow. Now, again, on, just to be clear, because this is so important, is that if you do have collections, I would not recommend – just going out there and start paying down your paying off your collections because number one, uh, you may it may actually hurt your credit. Number two, I like I've, I've had clients before where I look at their credit report and they thought that they had to pay collections, um, and we go through it and we're like, no, nah, we got you approved. You don't have to pay the collections. And so this gave them more. You're talking about being short of cash. If somebody's short of cash, they much rather have that like fifteen hundred bucks if that's what their collections are. They'd rather have that money to go to their down payment or their closing costs or to buy down their rate instead of you know, pay the pay, debts. paying off some old debts or whatever. So um, so having good credit could potentially you know, lower your, your overall cost of you know, buying in the house with the closing costs and the down payment, right? It makes a huge difference. And we're gonna go into some of the numbers here soon, but it makes a huge difference. It makes a big difference, not just in your uh, interest rate, but also, so the better your credit score, the lower an interest rate you can get, and the lower the cost for that rate. So when you go with the lowest, so you're, like I mentioned earlier, your rate can either have a cost or it can have a credit. So when you have better credit, you get a lower rate um, at less of a cost, or if you're trying to get a lender credit, you can get this, the, whatever the rate is, but it's going to have more credit that goes to you. And I got some examples here. Uh, uh, you know, I'll share in just a second. Um, the the one thing I, that we didn't talk about, and you were asking about how to improve your credit, is uh, managing your credit card balances. So a lot of times people think if they've got a credit card and they make the payment on time, then uh, that's going to improve their credit. Or they think, well, I'll get a credit card, but I really don't want to use it, but I just want to get the credit card to improve my credit so they'll get a credit card, but then they never use it. So uh, the use of credit with credit cards is probably one of the biggest things to bring people's scores down because um, a lot of people don't know that what can bring your score down is the uh, balance that you have on your card compared to your credit limit. Okay, so. So let's talk about that for a second. This is super important. A lot of people have credit card debt, and you know they're making the, the payment, but the balance is what's bringing their score down. So let's say that you've got a ten thousand dollar credit limit. Fifty percent of that limit would be five grand, right? Yes. So if you've got a five thousand dollar balance on a ten thousand dollar credit limit, you're at fifty percent of your of your yes. available credit. Right. If you're a if you're above, typically if you're above uh, like 40%, uh, so you're like 40% or higher of that credit limit, even though you're paying your payment on time, your score is going to go down. And the reason is because the credit bureaus look at it as you're maxing out these cards and, or this card. So, uh, what you, so one of the best things to do is to work on bringing your balances down. So if you've got a $10,000 uh, limit 
and you you owe nine grand or ten grand, I mean you're just basically maxed out. You want to get it below fifty percent, and then you want to get it below forty uh, percent, and then you eventually want to get it to where you're like in single digits. But you still want to use credit. Some people get a credit card and then they never use it, and that doesn't help their credit because there's credit is about using credit it's about you, you know you use it and then you pay the bill you use it and you pay the bill so if you're not using it and there's no bill to pay then it's the going credit nowhere. yeah it's going nowhere you're just kind of spinning your wheels it's like i need to close a jc penny credit card right <laughs> yeah <laughs> i just yeah, you know i'm glad you mentioned that so another thing that can hurt your credit is it, it, let's say that you've got an account let's say you've got an account and you've had it for five years um and that's your oldest account on your credit report. If you close that account, you no longer have a five-year credit history of, of open accounts. You've got a credit history, but you don't have a uh, you don't have any account that's open that long. Okay. So one thing that helps is uh, to have a uh, older account. Okay. So, so uh, if you've got an account and you're not using the credit card, but it's your oldest one, you, you really want to think twice before. You know, just closing, closing it because it could bring your score down too. It's a lot of things you gotta <laughs> kind of wage in and you know just see see what to do. But I'm glad. Yeah, you're yeah. Credit credit questions. can be really confusing because you would think that if you're paying your credit card on time and you've never had a late payment and you've never gone over your limit, you would think everything's yeah. cool. But it's not that yeah. way. Which late payments can still obviously affect your credit. Yeah, so yeah. So 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 if you if if, if you're making your payments late. Right now, the best thing, one of the best things to do is to, to figure out how to get the payments in on time. You, you know, get caught up. If you're delinquent, that's another, you know, that's a little bit than being late. If you're like two, three, four months behind, you want to uh, take care of something like that, like ASAP, because you're, if you're three or four or five months behind, you're probably getting close to them turning it over to a collection agency. And that's going to make things even, even worse. worse, like way worse. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, so, so that part of it is important too. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, let's go over to my next question. Um, so, where can you check your credit? Like, what are, okay. what are some good places to check it? Okay. Cool. So, um, first of all, for your mortgage. Sorry. Just. To... All right. For, so, so uh, first of all. Each credit bureau, TransUnion, Equifax, Experian, each one of them has multi, has many different uh, what's called a scoring model. It's just an algorithm. It's basically how they assign importance to different things on your credit report or whatever. So, so they all have different models. The the algorithm, the, the formula that's used for mortgages, there's not a consumer report available. And this is where the credit system is really kind of screwed up. So let's say that you want to know exactly what score the mortgage broker or mortgage lender is going to you know, pull. You can't find that out. You can get your own scores, but it's going to be a different scoring model. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's not a very fair system sometimes for the consumer. So where can you get your scores? Where can you get your report? You can get your report for free at annualcreditreport.com, and that's not like a uh, that's not like a site that you go on and it's a third party. That's a site where you can actually get your credit reports directly from TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Um, the reports are free twice a year, I think, or maybe it's just once. But but you can go there, annualcreditreport.com. It doesn't include your credit scores though. It, you, you, you're only entitled to a free credit report um, but not your scores for free so if you go to the site they're gonna they may try to upsell you to, okay. to, to purchase your scores nowadays a lot of people have uh, like their credit card company or their bank or whatever will uh, provide the scores for free um, and there's also other services like Credit Karma, which I know nothing about, so yeah. I'm not saying it's good or it's bad. But there are services out there, and if you already have a credit card or a bank account, it, you know, they're probably you've probably got some kind of free service yeah, there. Yeah, I, I do have um, well, with my bank, I do have access to my score, but I don't know how accurate is that, you know, compared to you know if I want to get like a car loan or even a mortgage. Mortgage yeah. mortgage scores. Mortgage scores tend to be a little bit lower. 
So, so if you were looking at your credit through one of these, like your bank, yeah. and, and they say, okay, here's your uh, Equifax score, it's an 800. Okay. Um, it's probably gonna be a little bit lower, or could, could be 20, 30 points lower, uh, from when the mortgage credit report is pulled. Gotcha. So when the bro mortgage broker or the mortgage lender pulls your credit, it's typically lower than the credit score that you you, that you're seeing. And so that's a little bit of a shock to people because they're like, oh, you know, I got a, a 750 score and then I pull it and it's like it's a 700 and they're like, oh, this can't yeah, be right or whatever. So, so again, it's not set up to be very fair to the consumer, but it is what it is. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on uh, to the next question. And then what would be the, the, the difference between a hard inquiry and a soft? Awesome. So, great questions. Thank you. Uh, hard inquiry and soft inquiry, sometimes they're called a hard pull or a soft pull. So, um, a soft pull does not lower your credit score. A hard inquiry, and actually a soft pull doesn't even show up on your credit report, and I'll tell you why in a second, but the hard inquiries do show up on your credit report, and they bring your score down. And just like we were talking about negative accounts or whatever, the older it gets, the less of an impact it has on your score. So if you had your credit pulled today, it would bring your score down. But as that inquiry got older, um, and, and actually they, they stay on your credit report for two years, but the, um, sorry about that. You're good. Mm. The, uh, the, they, they stay on your credit report for two years and, uh, but they really don't have much of an impact after the first year. Okay. And then, you know, and then like I was saying, it, it gets Trick gradually down. a little bit better. But right. at, once it's a year old. Now, uh, the government did pass some stuff to make it more fair to the consumer to be able to shop for a loan. So when you're making a major purchase, let's say you're buying a car or a mortgage or, you know, a house or a, a boat, something large, you have a, a time frame to be able to shop around and get your credit pulled from multiple people without it counting against you. So it just counts. You, you could have it pulled by 15 people within that time frame, and it's just going to be like one inquiry. It's still going to show up yeah. on your credit report, but it's only going to have the impact of, of one. one inquiry. That's nice. Yeah. That. For, more, for mortgages, it's a 45 day 45? Window. That yeah. kind of leads up to the, my next uh, question is the, how many times is your credit pulled during the home buying process? Uh, so how many times is it pulled during the home buying process? In, in the beginning, uh, the loan officer is going to pull it one time. Okay. And, oh, I never said what was the difference between soft inquiries. Oh, yeah. Let me answer that real quick. Sorry, don't forget you're that good, question. You're good. So, so what a soft inquiry is, a soft inquiry is like, let's say that you, um, you apply for a job and they run a background check. That's a soft pull. Uh, let's say that you um, are applying for an apartment lease. Sometimes they'll use a hard pull, but a lot of times they'll just do a soft pull. See, I would think it's most of the time for a hard pull for like stuff like that. Like so, sometimes, like a, sometimes, or, well, right. sometimes apartments are hard pulls, but um, but sometimes they're soft pulls. Another one that's a soft pull is when you get you ever uh, you uh, probably gotten a, a credit card offer in the mail before. I get tons. I turn them all down. I yeah. get tons, especially when I started when I turned eighteen. I yeah. got tons. Yeah, tons. yeah. That is a. When they send that to you, that's a, they're doing a soft pull before they send that to you. Gotcha. They're, they're doing a soft pull to see if you meet their criteria, and then they send that, uh, they send that offer to you, yeah. and they're required by law, if they go through those steps and send that offer to you, they're required to actually honor that. Whatever really? they sent you, really? yeah. So they have to do their due diligence before just sending it out. They can't send it out to somebody that's got bad credit if they're offering like an excellent, you know, rate. Yeah. And they don't want to send out a, a a bad, you know, a high rate to somebody that's got excellent credit. So it's not gonna. Yeah. So that's a, so, it. so that's a soft yeah. pull. And they get really yeah, they, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they get really creative when sending over those letters. It's just yeah. Wow. Some of so yeah. Just, some some of them are. Uh, uh, yeah, very compelling to open it and yeah. send, send it back in, that yeah. kind of stuff. And then, um, what was that question we were? Yeah, we, we, how how many times is your credit pulled during the home buying process? Awesome. In the beginning, when you get pre-approved, 
the loan officer, whether they're working for a broker or a bank, a credit union, a lender, whatever, the loan officer is going to pull your credit for the pre-approval. They got to know what's on your credit report. In addition to they have to know what's on your credit report, they have to run your application through an automated system that reads that information off of that credit report. So it's like an integrated system. So, so if you were to go apply, you know, so if you applied with one bank and they pulled your credit and then you go over to another, so you go over to a mortgage broker and you say, hey, I want to, you know, apply for a loan and here's my credit report from this last guy. They can't actually run you through the automated system because the credit report has to be pulled through their system. So if you were to, and this is where that rule, that 45 day window comes in handy. If you're shopping around for rates or you're trying to find the best service or whatever it is that's important to you, you've got that ability to, you know, keep getting your credit pulled in that, in that beginning time. So, you know, you might have it pulled while you're shopping around two, three, four, five, six times. As long as it's within that 45 day window, you're cool. Now, let's say that you start looking for a house, you don't find a house right away, the market's hard, it's hard to find something, and now let's say that you're like four months into it. Uh, the credit reports do expire with the lender. So when you get to a certain point, you, so the credit report has to, the credit report has to be good for four months, has to be less than four months old okay. when you uh, uh, close on the loan. And most escrows talk, take about 30 days. So you, you pretty much have like three months once it's pulled. So if it takes you longer to find a home, then you're going to have to have it re-pulled. So that would be another time. Then once you get into uh, uh, escrow on the house and you're ready to buy the house and now the loan is going from pre-approved to actually we're going to you know, do all the other work and the pre-approval, I mean, and do all the approval, the official approval, at that point, um, your credit, you might have some soft pulls. So like when the lender gets to the end and they're getting ready to say, hey, we're completely done. Here's all the documents for you to sign. Um, but right before they release the documents, a lot of times they'll run a soft pull. Now the soft pull, the reason they're doing it is not to see if your credit score has changed, but to see if there's been any changes like where um, you've applied for credit and now it, you have new credit that's not on the credit report. They, gotta, they have to know that so that they can uh, put, it into their, uh, um, put it into the debt ratios. So I think I told you before, we had yeah. somebody that went out and, and bought a, uh, traded in their car and went from, a, I forgot what it was, it was like a, went from like a $400 payment to like a 550 payment. Well, that extra 150 bucks threw them out of being able to qualify. And so we were supposed to close in three or four days and, um, you, you know, it, it was, yeah, it was something that we had to work with. So they yeah, went like out. always consult with your loan officer. Something you tell me, you know, when, uh, when we make like how to videos and something, you just always tell me to always consult with yeah, your loan Yeah, you know, b b before you quit your job, before you, uh, you know, apply for credit, uh, before you uh, do, any, like, do anything purchase. credit related, yeah. yeah, check with your loan officer and, and, and he or she can give you some tips on what to do and what not to do because you don't want to go out and apply for credit, the like credit cards. The inquiries are going to hurt you, um, and that's something that's really common. You know, like you're in the line at Target to pay, and they're like, "Well, you know, apply for a card. We'll give you whatever, ten percent, fifteen percent off." A lot of people do that, and when you have your your credit pulled for that card, it's going to you know bring the score down. Wow, which could potentially you know miss out on getting yeah, you know, you miss out on getting the house. Yeah, wow, yeah, that's could crazy. be bad. And then another thing, and we did kind of talk to this a bit off camera. But it would be how to freeze your credit, and then what is freezing your credit? I know some. Yeah, people. yeah, yeah. We were talking about this like yesterday, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So um, freezing your credit. Freezing your credit is when you, the consumer, reach out to the credit bureau and ask them to uh, put a freeze on anyone being able to do a hard inquiry. Okay. Okay. And so what that does is that helps to prevent against um, identity theft, identity fraud. Um, it helps to prevent uh, somebody that's unauthorized going out and applying for credit 
in your name with your social security number. So that's what a credit freeze is. It doesn't cost you anything, uh, but you have to do it with each credit bureau. So you'd have to do it with TransUnion, Equifax, Experian. And um, if you're gonna have your credit pulled, you got to turn the freeze off and then turn it back on. So if you're going to, uh, uh, you know, apply for a credit card, you got to turn the freeze off and then turn it back on. If you're applying with me for a mortgage, you're going to have to turn the freeze off. And then once we pull the credit report, turn it back you can on. turn it right back on. And do you re uh, recommend doing that um, during the home buying process, freezing your credit? You know, just because I would think I, I want to freeze it so nothing gets impacted and only unfreeze it, you know, when it's time to, you know, yeah, you could, you could do that. I mean, typically people that freeze their credit look at it as more of a long-term thing than just for the, you know, home transaction. Okay. And, and so they're doing it as a preventive measure. And, uh, and it's free. Um, if you are in an industry where they're constantly, like, pulling your credit for different things, like in a lot of financial services, if you're in the mortgage business, you get your credit pulled a bunch. Um, so if, if you're constantly getting your credit pulled, you may not want to do that because you got to turn it on, turn it off a bunch of times. But for a lot of people, it's a good thing, especially for free. It's just a good protection, especially nowadays with so yeah. much cyber crime and yeah. uh, credit card numbers, you, you know, ending up yeah. in the wrong hands and yeah. stuff like that. So, yeah. Awesome. And my next question is, um, so how long uh, does it take for the credit bureaus to update your credit? Like you mentioned, you had um, your client that you went ahead and got that extra $150 payment. How long, how quick was uh, <laughs> were the bureaus on that, you know, for you guys to get notified, like, hey, man. Yeah, so, so, so the way we found out on that one was, was it was a soft pull right before the loan documents go out. It was a soft pull, and that's where that came up. And fortunately, we were able to find some ways to work around that there's that's not always the case but we were able to figure out a way karen found a way to get that one done which was great um but how long does it take let's say that uh let's say that you want to get pre-approved right now but your score is too low for you to get pre-approved or your score is too low for um uh to get the terms that you want okay. what uh what can be done is the loan officer uh, that's working on your file usually has access to a tool called a credit simulator and they get different names but basically what it is it's, it's like you can it, it you can take a person's credit report and you can go through and you can do some hypothetical situations you can say okay well what if we close this account what if we paid this one off what if we paid this collection what if we paid this uh, whatever uh, what if we opened a new account? So you can go through and you can put in, plug in all those hypothetical things, and it will tell you, it will give you an estimate of what well, the score what's, what's would change. Happen. And we can set it up so that we can see, you know, if you did these things, what would your score look like in 12 months, six months, five months, three it's months? It's like a planner. But, but we can also look at it and see what, what, kind of, um, what kind of impact would it have immediately so if you want to buy immediately and you don't qualify because of credit sometimes there's things that you can do you can pay down a credit card like we were talking about if you've got credit cards if you got say you got three credit cards and they're all above 50 percent uh, of the credit usage just getting those down to like 30 percent or so will on on three cards would be a huge boost to someone's credit so in those situations where somebody's ready right now, they want to go buy a house right now, but they're not qualifying, what we'll do is we'll do the credit simulator, we'll figure out the different steps that we can take right now to get the score up. It might be um, opening a new account, it might be uh, deleting an authorized user account. Do you know what authorized user is? No. All right, cool, we'll talk about that in a minute. It could be deleting authorized user account, it could, there's all, all kinds of things that can be done. The simulator lets us know which ones are the best ones. And a person might be working with a limited, every, you know, you're always working within some kind of limitation. So the person might have, you know, $3,000 that they can put towards credit cards or whatever. We can go in and we can figure out how to distribute that $3,000 in the best way, right? in the best way to bring the score That's down. Awesome. So once we do the, uh, once we do the simulator, and then we give the instructions to the buyer uh, for what to do, and we can help them with uh, some of the some of the things, that, you know, like reaching out to the creditors or whatever. Once they do those things, like pay that credit card down, 
Then they get a letter from the credit card company that shows the new balance. We take that letter, we supply it to the company that is our intermediary with the credit bureaus. And they are able to provide that new balance or whatever, the letter that shows the new status of that account. They provide that letter to the bureaus and the bureaus will update things immediately. So nice. You, so, so you're talking about how long does this stuff take? What I just described right there is like three or four days. Yeah. So you can turn you can have somebody not approved on Monday and then they take the the right, the they take the right steps and by yeah, by the end of the week they're approved. Nice. Yeah. So so now that's on and that's called a rapid rescore and uh, it's not right for everybody because sometimes you can't do enough to get the score up right away. You gotta get some cool. some some time behind you. So we can still use the simulator for that and figure out where's the best place to pay things off, where's the best place to, uh, you know, should we open another account, should, you, should we uh, get an authorized user account, should we delete an authorized user account. So we can still run that simulator, but if there's not, uh, if there's not uh, uh, an immediate need or, you know, because they don't want to buy right now, maybe they want to buy in six months. Uh, or if we can't get the score up fast enough, then now we're going to start looking at, okay, well, where are we going to be in two months? Where are we going to be in three months? Where are we going to be in four months? And we can, you know, judge it from there. In a situation like that, we would use the simulator, but we wouldn't use the rapid rescore because we don't need anything to happen rapid. We actually got to get a few months under our belt to help the score. Oh, sure. So you guys make like these custom plans for your clients if they do need them. Yeah, That's exactly, nice. exactly. It's custom plan, credit simulator is the first step that allows us to kind of like analyze what's wrong and what can be improved quickly and where's going to be the best best bang for your buck if you've got, you know, X amount of dollars, where, where can we put those dollars to get your score up? And, and then that second tool is what's called a rapid rescore. And um, yeah, I mean, awesome. it's, it's, a, it's a great, great way to, tool. takes the guesswork out of, you know, what do I do with, to get my credit awesome. out? And I got another. All right, so I got another question is, um, so a higher limit, could, you know, getting a higher limit on a credit card potentially get your score up and get you into that home loan? Absolutely, absolutely, it could. And it's the same thing. Uh, if you've got a ten thousand uh, dollar credit limit, and you've got three three thousand dollars, that's thirty percent usage. Uh, if you had, uh, well, let me do a different higher usage. So you got ten thousand dollar limit. Let's say you got eight thousand dollar usage. You're at eighty percent. If you were able to get your uh, credit limit increased to twenty thousand dollars and you've got an $8,000 uh, balance. Now all of a sudden you've gone from 80% usage to 40% usage. Like half. Half. Awesome. Exactly. So, so getting, your, getting your credit limits raised is something that can really benefit you, but um, just because you request them to be raised doesn't mean they're going to get raised. Uh, you may also go through a credit inquiry uh, so now if you didn't get approved and you got hit with the credit inquiry, now your score is lower. Um, and the uh, other thing that I was going to say is just kind of a cautionary thing. If you've maxed your card out at $10,000 10, limit or close to maxing it out at $10,000 limit and you get it increased to $20,000, you just got to be really, really careful that you don't go out and spend, spend, spend. And now you're in the same boat as far as your usage, but now you owe even more money. You know, you don't want that part. So, so, so it could help if you're able to get it done and we would do the same exact thing that we talked about earlier we were talking about the rapid rescore um, so if you got your credit limit increased you get a letter you, you would request a letter from the creditor we can take that letter and submit it to the bureaus and get them to um, and get them to uh, rapid rescore it right away and so now we're talking about like just a matter of days now if you didn't do the rapid rescore. Let's just say that you got your uh, credit limit increased, and, and and now you're just waiting for the, the credit card company to report that new information to the credit bureaus. They report it to the credit bureaus when they send out a statement. Okay. So, like, let's say that they mailed your statement yesterday, and then today you requested a credit limit increase, and they gave it to you. 
that's not going to report to the bureaus until the next until they send out your next statement. So now you're talking about you're almost a month away. If you're not going to buy a house right away, then that might be cool with you. But if you're ready to get pre-approved and you want that information to improve your credit score right away, then we do the rapid rescore. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Because gotcha. right. I remember earlier you asked, like, how long does all of this stuff take? Yeah. And it just varies. And that's the thing about doing that credit simulator is we can say, oh, well, you make these changes. This is where you'll be in two months, three months, six months, a year, two years, or whatever. Um, and uh, it's different for different people based on, you know, how good, or bad, how good or bad the credit oh, is. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And then coming down to my last question, I know we kind of somewhat answered this, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so what impacts your credit score the most? So what are like the big things that, uh, the, that the, the, the big things are late payments don't have a late payment and if you're behind on anything get it caught up so that's what if that's like for most people that's the number one thing if there's anything negative that's the usually like the the worst thing that could be on the report some of those uh, more serious things we talked about earlier like bankruptcies judgments tax liens that stuff is really really bad stay out of that stuff um, and, and then it, a lot of times it just comes down to your usage with credit, uh, credit cards. Gotcha. So like we, like we've talked gotcha. about a good bit. Gotcha. What yeah. about like, uh, like a car loan? Let's say you have like a, you know, $5,000, $10,000 car loan left on there. Would paying that off, I, it would like bump it up, right? It, it could help or it may not help. Um, it, so, uh, paying, uh, so that's what's called an installment loan. Installment loan is where we'll, it's technically it's an auto loan, but an auto loan is an installment loan. A mortgage, I guess, a mortgage is really an installment loan. An installment loan is where you have a set monthly payment for a set number of months. Okay, so so that's an installment loan. A credit card is different. That's a called a that's a revolving account. A credit card, gotcha. you don't have the gotcha. same payment every month. It varies based on what your balance is, right? Yeah. So and also too, it's not for a set number of months. If you just pay the minimum payment on your credit card and never charge anything else on that card, and you had a, you know, uh, five thousand dollar balance, it would take a very long time to pay that off. Uh, so an installment loan is like, all right, you got sixty months and your payment is five hundred bucks a month, or you got a house and you got three hundred and sixty months of payments and it's a, you know, twenty five hundred dollar payment or whatever. That's an installment loan. When you pay those off early, they, or, or, or even when you just pay them off, uh, they don't have as much of a, a impact on your score as you would think, as far as improving your score. It, it, imp it helps, uh, but it doesn't help as much as you might think. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. See, I would think it would, you know, stand out. So yeah. Like Cred credit's really, you know, a lot of the things that seem natural are like the opposite. <laughs> you know, the opposite right thing to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, look, before you, is that, is that the viewer question? Yeah, yeah. Before you get the viewer question, let me just double check and see if I got anything here. Now, the one thing that I wanted to mention was if you're getting a loan and if you're, if you're getting a loan, you usually have two choices, FHA or conventional. If you've been in the military and you're honorably discharged or you're currently in the military, then a VA loan might work for you. But for most people that have been, if you haven't been in the military, you're going FHA or conventional. Now with FHA loans, um, you can get a loan with a 580 credit score, but you're not gonna have like the best of terms. So what you wanna do is you wanna start getting your score, you, you, you wanna see if you can get your score up. You know, so, so, and you go in like 20, 20 to 40 point increments is where you start to see a change. So if you were going FHA and you had a 580 score and you were able to get your score up to a 620, that's gonna make a very, very big difference in what kind of rate or what your closing costs are gonna be, okay? okay? Now on a conventional loan, uh, the minimum conventional loan, uh, minimum score for conventional loan is 620. So that sounds great, right? It's like, oh, I got low credit, my mom at 620, I'm still gonna get a conventional loan. The problem is not only is the rate high on conventional at 620, so are the closing costs. You have to pay, not only do you have a high rate, you have to pay for it. You have to uh, pay the, the discount points. Uh, but in addition to that, you have to get mortgage insurance unless you put 20% down. And mortgage insurance is credit-based as well. 
So I, I got an example here. Let's say that you were getting a, let's, let's just say it's a $500,000 loan and okay. your credit score and you're going to, you want to go conventional. If your credit score is a 620, the mortgage insurance is 1.74%. So let me put that into perspective on uh, dollars. So let's say a $500,000 loan times 1.74% is $8,700. We're going to divide that by 12 if my calculator. So we come up with 725. So that's $725 a month for mortgage insurance. Just for mortgage insurance? On a $500,000 loan. So that's 620. Let's say that you were able to get your credit score up to a 680. Now let's look at that and see what we got. $500,000. Well now, instead of a 1.74 uh, mortgage insurance factor, we're using 0.88. So we go uh, 0.88, and then we divide that by 12. Now it's dropped to 366 a month. It's still high, but it's much, much better than it was. If you were able to get your score to a 740 or higher, the mortgage insurance would drop to a 0.46 uh, MI factor. So times 0.46 divided by 12. Now the mortgage insurance is 191 bucks a month. So, you so it's the same loan. But the mortgage insurance, what's the difference? The first one was like seven fifty a yeah, month. Seven right? twenty, like yeah. seven fifty, seven hundred. Seven hundred bucks a month. And at a six twenty score, if you were at a seven forty score, the, the mortgage insurance would be like hundred and ninety bucks. That's just the mortgage insurance. Your your interest rate would be a lot better too. Your uh, closing costs would be a lot better too. So so that credit report uh, or your credit score is like super uh, important. super important, uh, not just to qualify for the loan, but to get the best terms. On FHA, the mortgage insurance is the same no matter what your credit score. It's different from the conventional loans. Uh, and, and then with FHA, they go down to a 580 score, but it's, it's similar where the lower scores are not gonna have the best rates or the best uh, closing cost. So, gotcha. And then um, I think we covered a lot yeah. of, oh, disputes. You know what disputes are? Disputes are no, kind of. Okay, so let's say that there's something on your credit report and you disagree with it. Okay. Okay, you can uh, dispute it. You dispute it with the credit bureau and um, while you're disputing that information, they suspend the negative information. So sometimes your score will improve. Uh, and sometimes people will use this, I've seen credit repair companies try to use this as like a tactic to you know, get new, new customers, uh, what they'll do is they'll say, hey, you know, we're going to dispute all these things so that uh, we're, we're going to uh, get your credit score up and they'll uh, dispute a bunch of stuff. The credit score goes up, but then once the creditors supply all of the verifications and the information is correct, because they're disputing stuff that isn't cor that is accurate, um, then what happens is the uh, disputes are removed and then the score goes back down. Yeah, so, so sometimes people will think they've read an article somewhere or they've heard from a credit repair person, oh, I'm going to dispute all this stuff, and that's going to boost my score. It would, but it's temporary. And if you're going through the loan process and you're disputing something that's negative, uh, you know, that's affecting your credit negatively, the uh, lender is going to require that you have that dispute removed. So that's part of the process, uh, the loan process, if you have disputes on your credit uh, wow. report. And then if it's, it is accurate, then, um, you know, the lender, you know, then you wouldn't be able to get that off because it's Yeah, accurate. you can't, yeah, you can't get it off just because it's, you don't like it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, well, I cool. got all my questions. Uh, well, let's do it. What's the viewer question? Let's do the viewer question. All right. Uh, so this week's viewer question is, um, will the market get better? <laughs> I, I don't know if they're talking about the housing market or the mortgage market or whatever. Uh, the housing market, it, you know, if you're interested in buying a house, you've probably been following this stuff for a while. Um, it, you know, uh, since COVID hit, prices have gone up, up, up. The, uh, a lot of the economists from 
you know, different groups like uh, Zillow and uh, uh, Realtor, NAR and NAR, NAR is National Association of Realtors. Okay. Uh, you know, so you've got these different economists that, that make these predictions or whatever. And they, most of them all predicted that the, the uh, uh, rate of appreciation was going to slow down this year. Uh, it, it would still be very fast paced compared to previous years. normal years, okay. but it's not going to be, they, they say it's not as going to be as uh, uh, fast an increase as previous years. However, um, so, so to give you some numbers like uh, if, if during COVID we were at like 12% annual appreciation, then uh, these new numbers are they're saying, well, maybe we'll be at 8% appreciation. Normal appreciation is like 3-4%. Still, still so, a so, lot. Yeah, so this stuff is still really, really high. Now, Zillow just came out with their, their uh, uh, predictions. They just kind of like reversed course and said they think this spring is actually going to be a record setter for uh, prices. So if you're going to buy a house, it's probably not the best news because, you know, the, the higher something costs, uh, the more your payment's going to be, or you're not going to be able to get what you want. Maybe, you, you know, you, maybe now you qualify for 500, but as interest rates go up, uh, you, you know, maybe you'd only qualify for 475. And then this house over here that you liked for 500, Just now, right now it's selling for 550. So, so, so with interest rates going up, uh, which is where they're headed, everybody's uh, saying we should have probably about a three quarter to, uh, of a point to maybe a point difference by the end of the year. Uh, so, and we've seen in the last few, uh, last co uh, couple of months, we've probably seen about a three quarter point increase already. So, um, so, so where's the market headed? Housing market still headed up. Uh, spring could possibly be, you know, a crazy time. Uh, typically, there's a little bit of a lull, usually around like between Thanksgiving and the New Year. So that's an opportunity for people, but that's still a ways into the future. And as far as where rates are headed, rates are, are headed up as well, unfortunately. But you know, they're 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 great compared to where they were. I, I bought my first house when I was 26. Uh, which was what, 1995, I think, or 97, uh, uh, 1997. And um, uh, interest rate was seven and a quarter at the time. And I know people that, you know, bought houses a long, long time ago, and uh, their interest rates were like 12%, 14%. Wow. So even though we're, you know, so we're still in the threes, and on FHA stuff, we, we're down into the twos still in some situations. Um, but you know they're going to creep back into the fours. Eventually they'll creep back into the fives. But um, but they're still really really low compared to you know where they were tr traditionally for for a long time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Does that answer your? Yeah. Well, it's, it's not your view, question. It's a view your question. question. <laughs> so, hey guys, uh, hope you guys found this helpful. Uh, we love helping you. If you've got questions. Uh, and you want answers, reach out to us. We're happy to help. You can text or call our office at 949-518-0742. Uh, you can also visit our website and uh, see some information there. And we're constantly adding uh, a new episode every week for two guys so you can uh, check us out. Yeah, and then also if you guys have any viewer questions, feel free to drop them down in the comment section below. We'll go ahead and answer them in one of our future videos. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, please subscribe yeah. and uh, yeah. comment yeah. and share and all that good stuff. We really appreciate it. Hope you guys found this helpful and we'll see you next week. See you.